Tip number one. Preparation is everything. Check all equipment before its use and have backup airway devices within arm's reach. At a minimum, always have a nasopharyngeal airway, NPA, and Yankauer suction ready before any intubation scenarios. Tip number two. Whenever possible, bag valve mask ventilation should be performed by two people. In this technique, one person squeezes the bag while the other person uses both hands to create a seal and deliver breaths to the patient. The two-person approach has been shown to deliver higher tidal volumes and create a better seal. Tip number three. Only after correct airway positioning and use of a nasopharyngeal airway can one proficiently apply proper bag valve mask technique. Nasopharyngeal airways are used to keep the airway open in conscious or semi-conscious patients, especially when an oropharyngeal airway cannot be used due to an intact gag reflex. Tip number four. Keep dentures in place during bag valve mask ventilation. During bag valve mask ventilation, keep dentures in place to assist in maintaining the mandible in an anterior position, thereby displacing the tongue away from the pharyngeal wall. Only remove dentures upon initiation of laryngoscopy. Tip number 5. All unconscious patients are assumed to have a partial airway obstruction. Use head tilt chin lift or jaw thrust maneuvers along with a nasopharyngeal airway to open the airway. Investigate for probable causes of coma, such as hypoglycemia, hypercapnia, CNS infection, seizures, and drug overdose, including sedatives, opioids, and alcohols. Tip number six. Usage of a tongue depressor before insertion of the laryngeal mask airway helps prevent the tongue from being pushed into the posterior pharynx. Tip number 7. The ideal way to position your patient prior to an intubation attempt is with the lower cervical spine slightly flexed and the upper cervical spine slightly extended. This is commonly known as the sniffing position. First, place folded towels beneath the head until the external auditory meatus is on the same horizontal plane as the sternum. Then, extend the head slightly, so that the patient's face is parallel to the ceiling. Tip number 8. Video laryngoscope improves success rate and glottic visualization compared with direct laryngoscope. Tip number 9. Bedside ultrasound or transtracheal sonography has become a valuable tool for confirming endotracheal tube position and should be considered an essential skill for healthcare professionals involved in endotracheal tube management. Tip number 10. Apneic preoxygenation for rapid sequence intubation. Never intubate without preoxygenation unless a crash airway. Anecdotally, patients undergoing rapid sequence intubation could have oxygen administered simultaneously via a nasal cannula and non rebreather mask or bag valve mask. Tip number 11 Impending respiratory failure is a clinical diagnosis not based upon imaging or blood testing. An acute alteration in mental status is a crucial indicator for impending respiratory failure. Tip number 12. The lemon assessment is a quick and easy bedside tool used by healthcare professionals to rapidly evaluate a patient's airway before intubation. 
It helps identify potential difficulties with intubation and make informed decisions about the best approach to manage the patient's airway. Take-home message. Always have a nasopharyngeal airway and Yankauer suction ready. Bag valve mask ventilation is a two-person procedure. Proper bag valve mask ventilation include correct airway positioning and use of a nasopharyngeal airway. Keep dentures in place during bag valve mask ventilation. All unconscious patients are assumed to have a partial airway obstruction. Usage of a tongue depressor before insertion of the LMA helps prevent the tongue from being pushed into the posterior pharynx. Position the external auditory meatus on the same horizontal plane as the sternum and the patient's face parallel to the ceiling. Video laryngoscope improves success rate and glottic visualization compared with direct laryngoscope. Use bedside ultrasound to confirm endotracheal tube position. Patients undergoing rapid sequence intubation could have oxygen administered simultaneously via a nasal cannula and non rebreather mask or bag valve mask. Impending respiratory failure is a clinical diagnosis, not based upon imaging or blood testing. The lemon assessment helps identify potential difficult airway. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.